Hello everyone, welcome back to Cambridge Guru once again. We are doing our last unit which is complex number and in that we have already covered two uh, videos on this uh, which were basically uh, based on uh, introduction of complex numbers and we also did some numericals which are involved in uh, basic uh, introduction of, of complex numbers means finding out the uh, magnitude and so on. So next topic here is representing complex numbers geometrically and if you remember in the previous videos I think at the time of introduction on this complex number I told you that uh, geometrically as we represent uh, real numbers on a single one dimension plane which is a horizontal line which we call as the number line. So on that number line uh, real numbers are plotted with the center point as the origin and on the right we have uh, positive numbers and towards the left of this origin we have the negative numbers right. So that line is called the real number line or just the number line. But now since the superset of real numbers have been introduced which are the complex number which has one portion as the real number and second portion is the imaginary number the i part right and we cannot add real part with the imaginary part so we represent the complex number separately with the real part and imaginary part right so since we cannot add these real with imaginary so geometrically if we have to represent so we have to introduce another dimension for uh, representing or for plotting the uh, the imaginary portion right as i told you earlier that real part are plotted on the horizontal axis so a method uh, was given by a mathematician to represent these the imaginary portion on a line which is perpendicular to the uh, this real line right so we normally say in the coordinate system if you compare the y axis on the y axis or on a vertical line we represent the imaginary portion of the complex number right so any plane which is like this that on a vertical axis and horizontal axis is denoted by the real part of the complex number z and the vertical axis is the imaginary part of complex number z where complex number z is your a plus i b right i times b so a is the real part b is the imaginary part so if you have to represent this complex number on this complex plane we say that this complex plane is the argand plane argand plane or simply the complex plane right so it means that the real number the real part is a units and the imaginary part is the b units so this is my complex number z and it is you can join the origin with this you will get z which is a plus i b right this is the horizontal distance a and this is the vertical distance b and if you compare this with the coordinate axis whose x coordinate is a y coordinate is b so simply you can say that as far as coordinate system are concerned this is same just like we have a coordinate a and b x coordinate is a y coordinate is b and there is a point p right similarly uh, the vectors are also you can say you can be introduced or you can there is an analogy with the vectors also that we can represent this vector op this is point p op such as its i component is a and j component is b and obviously this is i cap and this is just i right this i is the iota which is under root minus one and this is the x component or the unit vector along the x direction right so all these three things geometrically means same okay and since there is a vector since there is a distance op so here comes the concept of modulus of z which is the modulus of the complex number denoted by mod z right it is nothing but applying the pythagoras theorem in this triangle oap right so it is nothing but squaring and adding the real and imaginary part a square plus b square and meaning is that b since is real right remember at the time of introduction that this a and b are real this i b is the imaginary part we cannot add i b with a but of course we can add b with a because a and b are real 
Okay, so this a square plus b square is the magnitude of this complex number z. And since there is a magnitude and there is a vector, which as you can see in this plane, so there is obviously an angle theta, which this complex number is making with the real axis, right? We say that this theta is the argument of z or in short, you can write as argument of z, right? It is nothing but tan inverse of imaginary part of the complex number, which is in this case b divided by real part, tan inverse b by a, right? Simply applying the trigonometry in the triangle OAP. So tan theta is this AP divided by OA, right? Which is nothing but b by a. So tan inverse b by a is the argument of z and this argument of z will always lie between plus pi to minus pi, right? That means either you will measure the angle anti-clockwise like this between 0 to 180 or you will measure the angle clockwise from 0 to 80, right? In the negative direction, right? You cannot uh, write the argument as 190 or 270, right? If it is occurring, if this theta is occurring in the third or fourth quadrant, so we will measure this angle clockwise, means we will write the angle with the negative sign. Okay, uh, we will do some questions on this. Right, so this is all about magnitude and argument of z. Uh, next comes what is called the conjugate. Okay, so let us remove this. And if I plot a point on this argon plane, which is just the reflection of this point P, which is just P dash. Okay, this is P and this is P dash, which, which is the reflection of this point P in the real axis, right? And I join this. And as you can see that since this is the reflection, the real part is A, right? And imaginary part is minus B. This distance is again B, but it is in the negative direction. Right, so I will get another complex number denoted by Z star. This Z star is called the conjugate of the original complex number Z denoted by A minus IB. Real part is A, but B is reflected in the real part of Z in the, along the uh, horizontal axis. So it is just a reflection of point C denoted by Z bar, right? and Conjugate modulus is same as original uh, modulus, which is a square plus b square under root. Okay, it is just that theta is argument is just a negative of the original argument. Okay, and if you can extend this concept, if you multiply z with z steric, let us say c, what will be the result? Z is a plus ib and conjugate of z is a minus ib this is a square minus ib square right that means z into z bar is a square plus b square this is z into z star and as you can see here this is nothing but mod of z whole square so we have a very important property that wherever in the complex number you see the multiplication of the complex number with its conjugate, you just replace this by modulus of z square. Okay. z into z star is z square. Right. All right. Let us solve a couple of questions based on finding out the magnitude and argument of a given complex number. So it says that write the following complex number in polar form. Polar form means uh, writing uh, or finding out the magnitude and argument, right? So uh, this is z is 4 plus 3i. So modulus of z is 4 square plus 3 square square root, which is 25 square root, which is 5. So modulus of this is 5 and argument of z is tan inverse imaginary part which is 3 and rear part is 4 whatever is the value i think this is 36.9 or 8 something so approximately it is around 37 degrees okay 
let us come to the second part. Uh, this z, just a second, right? So z is minus i minus one plus i. So here uh, mod of z is minus one square plus one square. Please do not do i square. Okay, i is just the you can say prefix of the imaginary portion. We do not have to square this i as far as finding out the modulus is concerned. Right, so minus 1 square is 1 square, this minus 1 is in the bracket. Right, so basically uh, magnitude, of, magnitude of this complex number is root 2. As far as argument is concerned, as you can see that the imaginary part is positive but the real part is negative. Right, so in this case, my advice is that you do not include this negative sign as far as finding out the angle is concerned. So you just remove this negative sign and find out what is called the principal argument or the principal value of the argument. Right, principal value of argument means finding out that theta which is acute and that can only be find out if you remove the negative sign because if the angle is acute all the trigonometric ratios are positive. Right, since we have removed this negative sign as I told you earlier right first step is removing this negative sign so automatically you will get the theta as acute angle and that will be the principal value of the argument right so removing this negative sign you will get principal value of this argument as 10 inverse 1 by 1 which is uh, 45 degrees of pi by 4 okay so this theta is pi by 4 now since real part is negative an imaginary part is positive right if you have to plot this in a two dimension plane or in a complex plane so how this complex number will look like that real part is minus one so this is minus one and imaginary part is plus one so this is your complex number and this is your origin right so this argument is basically and this angle what you have to find out is 45 degrees right so from 180 you will subtract 45 so value of the argument actual argument will be pi minus pi by 4 which is 3 pi by 4 right this is the value of the argument of z right 3 pi by 4 fine so that's how you can write the complex number in polar form or comma theta form right as we did in the vectors similarly in the third part uh, z mod is minus 1 square plus minus root 3 square under root so this is 1 plus 3 which is 2 so mod of z is 2 and argument if you find out uh, 10 inverse minus root 3 by minus 1 which is just root 3 so i will find out theta as 10 inverse root 3 which is pi by 3 this i know because 10 inverse root 3 or 10 60 degrees is root 3 so it is pi by 3 so this is the principal value of the argument but not the actual now if you plot this complex number in a two dimension plane uh, real part is negative and imaginary part is also negative so basically it is lying in the third quadrant okay and your principal value is acute angle value is 60 degrees that means this angle is 60 degrees right but you cannot write this as pi plus pi by 3 because argument of theta will always lie between minus pi and plus pi right so that's me that means you have to measure this angle clockwise right which is pi minus pi by 3 is 2 pi by 3 but with a negative sign right so value of argument of z in this case is pi minus pi by 3 which is minus 2 pi by 3 okay basically this angle is pi by 3 this angle is pi by 3 right this angle is minus pi so what you will do is measuring minus pi in the clockwise direction that's why with a negative sign and from this move pi by 3 anti-clockwise so this is plus pi by 3 again i am repeating moving clockwise so pi degrees clockwise means minus pi for this right and then from this move back how much degrees pi by degrees anti-clockwise so that's why it is plus pi by 3 
So minus pi plus pi by 3 will give you minus 2 pi by 3. Okay, simple. So uh, this is the argument and this is the magnitude 2. Okay, uh, that's all for today, right? See you in the next video. Thank you.